this is the first question, uh, and I, I promised to get to it last week. Uh, as a lesbian who has never conformed to sex stereotypes, I am curious what makes real trans. Woman is not something to identify into. Live not by lies. And that last a reference to um, both Solzhenitsyn's essay and perhaps also Rod Dreher's book of the same name that we talked about extensively in episode 50. Um, so... Um, this is this is a conversation for a, a longer than a Q and A, and um, I think we may go there a little bit in the letter wiki that Abigail Schreier and I do, maybe a little bit. Um, but I would say this: that um, sex is based on what type of gamete you produce, right? If it's um, small and zippy versus large and sessile, you're male versus female. Um, what sex you are is determined in uh, mammals by your chromosomes, which then affect things um, beyond your um, your steroid hormones, but um, the steroid hormones being sort of primarily androgens or primarily estrogens or progesterone, um, being highly descriptive of what of whether or not you're going to become male or female. And so you have, you know, you have chromosomal sex, you have anatomical and physiological sex, which is largely described by um, endocrinology, um, although it turns out that the actual chromosomes, the actual X and Y at the 23rd location, also, um, even absent differences in, in hormone levels, um, can affect um, sex, like how you manifest your primary and secondary sex characteristics. Um, and then you also have ways that your sex is revealed in your in your brain, which includes not just you know like the white matter and gray matter, but also how it is that you perceive what sex you are. We are so complicated, and there are so many things going on that it shouldn't be surprising to us that under some conditions, one or more of those systems is not entirely conciliant. And so that that is my sort of very short uh, description. You know, when when one or more of those systems is not consilient with all of the rest, um, you will have someone who uh, looks one way and is in fact one sex, but feels so certain in themselves that they are the other thing. Um, that is not um, you know that that is what gender dysphoria is. That you you have a mismatch, and generally. You know, it's talked about between sort of your brain sex, what what it is that your brain is assuring you of, as opposed to the other demarcations of sex, which are, of course, the actual biological sex that you are. Yep, um, <clears throat> I would say you know this gets d more difficult to deal with um, the more uh, trans is taken to be um, normal I don't mean there's anything abnormal about it because I actually don't think there is I think it's got hist historical roots well it's su anything super rare can be considered abnormal well mm, I, I don't want to say that okay so the problem is abnormal carries the connotation of um, dysfunction and I I think there is real trans in the sense that we see it reflected in many cultures. It's mm -hmm. built in, it's ancient, um, which doesn't rule out the possibility of arriving there through dysfunction in modern times, be it, you know, hormones in the environment, you know, mm -hmm. or hormone mimics or whatever. Um, however, my point is just simply there is, uh, I don't think being trans is easy. And that is to say that at the point that the discomfort of um, living within the sex to which you were born is so great that you are ready to confront the complexity, difficulty um, of transition, then the point is you're actually saying something about the degree to which things feel off and that you'd actually, you know, prefer to confront that process of transition than to remain where you were. So <clears throat> to the extent that we are going to valorize transition and encourage people to think that any sense that they have that things are off or definitely an indication that you're trans, then this loses all meaning. But, um, and in fact, that's, that's really the, the key thing that I want to say is that, you know, we all, all of us who have grown up in modern times have dealt with the confusion of living in a world that is not well 
suited to us, right? It mm-hmm. isn't. And so the number of people who are going to have the sense, something is definitely profoundly off and I need a solution, that number of people is going to be high. Yeah. And therefore, the number of people who will say, I know what it is. I don't much like these sex roles that um, are inflicted on me. I had no choice about them. And you know what? I actually think I prefer that other thing. The number of people who will think that that's a solution until they've actually attempted it and discovered actually, you know what? Things are just generally off because the world is not well structured for people. Yeah, um, no, it's it's a it's a perfect storm where all the lunacy of postmodernity meets all of the market force and ability to do and in both of these things, ability to do great damage of big pharma, and you you, know, you just get these two things together in this perfect storm in 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 trans and you know I often would say you know it's trans rights activists as opposed to truly trans people, truly trans people being a much tinier, much tinier population with presumably some slight overlap between those and, you know, sort of everyone else who's who's doing some combination of activism and cosplay and LARPing and benefiting from pharmaceutical intervention, the likes of, you know, the we do know many of the downstream effects of a lot of the pharmaceuticals, um, both the hormone blockers and the puberty blockers and the actual cross-sex hormones that are being used. And we don't know most of them, I guarantee you. Um, but the combination of reality is what I say it is, and I will, um, I'm going to use um, the market-driven product over here uh, about which we know nothing and uh, the makers of which will not protect me in any way once the downstream effects are discovered, um, comes together just perfectly in this really, really terrible moment. So that is not to say, again, that there isn't some very tiny number of people who are really legitimately trans and who are better off, who live more complete lives, most of which don't have anything to do with their transness uh, from being able to transition. And I think um, maybe to say this in a way that's clearer than I've ever said it before, hopefully, Mm -hmm. um, there is something about the desire to avail oneself of scientific help in transitioning while denying the implications of scientific study with respect to things like sex and gender. One ought to be obligated to one side of this. Either you're postmodern and you really think the science stuff is just a posture that people strike, in which case you're wrong, but you're entitled to be wrong in that way. Um, Or you believe in science and you both want its help, but then are in some sense obligated to the method for figuring out what's true and what isn't. And um, it is, I think, driving many of us crazy to watch a desire for science a la carte, right? Mm -hmm. I want the drugs. I Mm -hmm. want uh, the surgery. I do not want to have to listen to another word about the difference between the sexes or the binariness of sex or gametes or any of those things. Down with (laughs) trade-offs. Down with (laughs) trade-offs. Yeah, down the the utopians who aren't up for the fact of trade-offs are, are a real problem, and uh, not listening to them would be a very good idea. But all you have to do is say down with trade-offs, and they're done. I guess so. Yeah. yeah.